Title of the first section is write a quadratic equation. In this section we'll take a graph or the roots for a quadratic equation and write the equation from there. First question is a graph of a parabola or quadratic equation. The parabola crosses at two points. The first point is at negative 3 on the x-axis and the second point is at positive 1 on the x-axis. The two points that the parabola crosses the x-axis are the solutions to this graph. So the solutions are x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. Taking these two values, we can write the quadratic equation. If we know one answer is negative 3, one of the factors will have to be x plus 3. The opposite of negative 3 gives us the plus 3. And the negative 3, if we plug it in, will make this value 0, which will be a solution to the quadratic equation. Second value of positive 1, if we do the opposite of positive 1, x minus 1, that again will give us a value of 0, which again will be a solution or root for the quadratic equation. And we'll set this equal to 0 for the quadratic equation. Simplifying this, we can multiply or FOIL the two parentheses. Foiling the first terms, x times x, would be x squared. Multiplying the outside terms, x times a negative 1, would be negative 1x. Multiplying the inside terms, 3 times x, would be 3x. And multiplying the last two terms, 3 times negative 1, would be negative 3, equals 0. Combining like terms, we'll have x squared, negative 1x plus 3x would be 2x minus 3 equals 0. And that will be our quadratic equation for the graph. Second question and last question for the section. We're given the roots to the quadratic equation. One root is negative 4 and the second root is negative 7. The roots are the same as the values where it crosses the x-axis or the solutions to the quadratic equation. So solving if one root is negative 4, one factor has to be x plus 4, because again, if you plug negative 4 in, this will give us 0, which will be an answer to the quadratic equation. The second factor, if we have 7, we do the opposite, which will be x minus 7, and we can set this equal to 0, since we have these solutions for the quadratic equations. Simplifying from here, foiling x times x would be x squared. The outside terms, x times a negative 7, negative 7x. The inside terms, 4x. And multiplying the last numbers, negative 28. Combining like terms, negative 7x plus 4x would be negative 3x minus 28. So our equation, given the roots, is x squared minus 3x minus 28 equals 0. The title of the next section is Review Factoring. In this section, we'll factor polynomials. First question is x squared plus 5x plus 6. There are a few ways to factor this. One method to factor is called the diamond method where we draw an x. For the x, the top number will be the last number 6, and the bottom number will put on the x the middle number, which is 5. To find our two numbers we'll use for the solution, those two numbers will multiply to get the top number, which is 6, and those same two numbers will add to get the bottom number, which is 5. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get 6, and those same two numbers add to get 5. Those numbers would be 3 and 2. 3 times 2 would be 6. 3 plus 2 would be 5. 
Once you know the two numbers that solve the diamond or x, we can write the answers. Since we're factoring x and we have our first number is 3, our first factor would be x plus 3. And our second factor, using the number 2, would be x plus 2. So the two factors for this question, x plus 3 and x plus 2. Second question and last question for the section. We have 3x squared plus 12x minus 63. Solving from here, factoring. We have three numbers, 3, 12, and negative 63, which we can take a common factor out of each of those. The greatest common factor we can factor out would be 3, so we'll divide each of these by 3. 3x three squared divided by 3 would be x squared. 12x divided by 3 would be 4x. And negative 63 divided by 3 would be negative 21. Factoring from here, inside the parentheses, the trinomial again, we can factor with the diamond method or by drawing the x. The last number, which is negative 21, we can put on top of the x, and the middle number 4, we can put on bottom of the x. And again, we want two numbers that multiply to get negative 21, and those same two numbers add to get 4. Those numbers would be 7 and negative 3. 7 times a negative 3 is negative 21, and 7 plus a negative 3 would be 4. Right now, our answer, we'll still have the 3 from before that we factored. And the first factor with 7, we can put back with the variable x, will be x plus 7. And our second number, negative 3, our last factor would be x minus 3. So our final answer would be 3, x plus 7, x minus 3. The title of the last section today is Solve by Factoring, and then Graph. In this section we'll solve quadratic equations by graphing, or by factoring, and then after factoring we can graph the quadratic equation. First equation is x squared plus 5x minus 24 equals 0. Factoring from here, again we can draw the x or the diamond method. Negative 24 would be the top number that we're multiplying to and 5 would be the bottom number that we're adding to. So two numbers that multiply get negative 24 and add to get 5. Those numbers would be 8 and negative 3. Writing our answers out in factored form, this would be x plus 8 and x minus 3 equals 0. After we factor, we can solve this equation and take in our solutions we can graph. We have two parentheses being multiplied together that equal 0 using zero product property. One of these parentheses, or both of them, have to equal zero. So x plus eight has to equal zero. And the second parenthesis, x minus three, could also be zero. Solving the first equation, subtracting eight on both sides, we'll have our first answer of x equals negative eight. And our second answer, if we add three on both sides, we'll have x equals three. So the two answers to the equation, x equals negative 8 and x equals 3. After we solve, we can take these two answers and graph the quadratic equation. 
drawing the x-y axis. Our first answer, x equals negative 8. We go out to negative 8 on the x-axis. And since x equals negative 8 makes the equation 0, the y value would be 0. And x equals 3. Since 3 makes the equation 0 or is a solution, that also makes y equal to 0. Since this is a quadratic equation, we know the graph has to be a parabola shape. We have two solutions to the graph. The graph is also positive, positive x squared. Since we have a positive x squared, the parabola must pass through both points, and the parabola must open up. And that would be the graph for the formula. Second question and last question for the section. The equation x squared equals 81. Solve this equation. We'll first take the equation and set it equal to 0 by subtracting 81 on both sides. So we'll have x squared minus 81 equals 0. From here we can factor x squared minus 81. Since 81 is a perfect square, we can take the square root of 81, which is 9, and the factors would be x plus 9 and x minus 9. Solving from here, we can take each parentheses, again set it equal to 0, since we're multiplying one or both of these parentheses have to equal 0. So we'll have x plus 9 equals 0, and x minus 9 equals 0. Subtracting 9 from the first equation, we'll have x equals negative 9, and adding 9 on the second equation we'll have x equals positive 9. So our two answers from factoring and solving the equation is x equals 9 and x equals negative 9. Last part we can graph using these solutions. Drawing the x-y axis. Our first answer negative 9. We go to negative 9 on the x-axis. And again, the y value would be 0 since the equation negative 9 is a solution to equal 0. And x equals 9 will be our second solution. Since this was a quadratic equation with x squared, we know the shape of this graph is a parabola. It was also positive x squared. So we can draw a parabola going through both points. And a positive x squared, the parabola would open up. And that would be the graph for the section.